Ladies and gentlemen, in this Elden Ring video, we got ourselves a Whipmaster build, aka a little red rod and whip. This is going to be a faith, dexterity, strength build, so we got a bit of a quality build here, if I don't say so myself. And thank you to DeadCell758 for recommending a build for me to put up. And for anybody else out there, definitely leave it down in the comments. I would love to make any thematic build that you guys would look forward to seeing in the future. Let's get into it. Starting off with the weapons that we're going to be using, we're going to be dual wielding two whips. I'm personally using the Giant's Red Braid and the Blood Whip. Now the Giant's Braid you're going to be getting from the Fire Giant later in the game, so we'll go over a a substitute whip just so you guys have something to start off this build with we're also going to be using the black knife due to the fact that it's going to scale very well with faith is very light and giving us an option to still be able to critical strike with this build and for me that's what its main use is for just in case we end up breaking any enemy stances now the giant's whip is going to have a b in strength d in dexterity and a c in faith while the blood whip is going to have a d in strength c in dexterity and a d in arcane so that's the only part that's a little bit off in this build is that you're going to have to find a nice balance between strength and dexterity to make sure you're finding a nice balance to increase the damage of these whips consistently. Now starting off, the Ash of War from the Giant's Braid is going to be Flame Dance, and this is an absolutely fantastic Ash of War, giving you a solid AoE option while still providing really good single target damage. If you're able to get this off before the enemy hits you at all, 9 times out of 10 it's going to stagger them, allowing you to finish off the entire animation, providing you with great damage and relative safety due to the fact that he swings it around and it's a whole AoE and nothing's going to be coming at you while this thing's active. Now on the offhand, we're going to have our blood whip and this we're going to be setting as a blood occult so that this way we're going to have some blood loss build up sitting at 76 so not only are you going to have a passive burn when you hit the enemies with the giant's braid but you're also going to have a potential blood loss and you already know how powerful that could be because of the offhand weapon the reason why we went with the black knife is just to be able to capitalize in case we break enemy stances and this does have a very high critical strike rating so it's going to fit that minor niche real nice I'm also going to be using the Erd Tree Seal in this build because our faith is pretty high sitting around 70. Anything below that I would just start using the Finger Seal or the Claw Mark Seal. But to each its own, whatever you can get your hands on first, grab that. And for anybody that's trying to get into this build right now and not wait for that Fire Giant, here's another option to get a whip early in the game. So one of the early whips that you can go out to get to replace the Fire Giant's Red Braid is going to be the Yurumi Whip. And this is coming from Carrion Manor, so you're going to have quite the hike if you're starting fresh. But say you're starting from the first step, you're going to take this all the way to the top left and just keep heading all the way up until you hit the road of the manor. Obviously, depending on what level you are, this stuff is potentially very dangerous. So keep your head down and just keep running. Staying to the right hand side when you're getting close to the Carrion Manor so you avoid the barrage of arrows coming down. And once you get inside Kyrian Manor, keep pushing because there are going to be these creepy hands trying to grab you up. But if you keep running, you shouldn't be touched, so I wish you luck. First checkpoint you're going to get is the manor lower level. Once you get here, you're going to head straight in this pathway, heading to our next checkpoint, which is going to be the manor upper level. Now take this elevator back down from where you came from, jump right off to the left hand side. There will be a few little baby hands guarding this whip. Again, if you're lower level, just walk right by and collect your Yurumi whip.
And by the way, if you guys are enjoying these builds, feel free to hit the like button. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying these videos and potentially might be trying these builds out yourself. Thanks so much. Moving on from that, let's talk a bit about our armor. This is where that red rod and whip is going to be coming into play. We're going to have ourselves the skeletal mask looking real good. And we're going to be using the rotten gravekeeper cloak. This looks absolutely badass and actually has some decent physical damage negation, even though your like chest is all out. We're also going to have the Drake Knight's gauntlets as well as the Nox greaves. But obviously some of you guys aren't just here for the look. So a nice power increase in case you wanted to swap something out for a little bit more of a boost in damage would be the Raptor's block. Black feathers. Because we're rocking two whips, I find myself using that jump attack like 90% of the time, does great damage, and using both of those whips, applying potential bleed and a fire dot like we discussed early in the video. And with these raptors feathers, it's just going to increase your jump attack damage even further. And quick question and shout out to you guys. What builds are you working on right now? And what would you like to see from me moving forward? Any specific builds that interest you guys, please leave them down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Next up, let's talk about our spells and incantations. So first up, we're going to have Bestial Sling. This is a quick cast incantation coming out like a shotgun. It's not going to do an insane amount of damage just a way for you to whittle enemies down if needed our main base ability is going to be flame sling because we have a flame main hand weapon sticking to that theme does great damage as a base spell costing very little fp for one of our big boys we're going to be casting flame of the fell god this is a great spell when it works you can combo this really nicely when an enemy's coming at you and is very aggressive. You could throw one or two of these out. By the time they get to you, you could set this up with your flame dance on your weapon, and you're just going to have an absolute nuke waiting for these enemies. However, let me know if you notice this. Sometimes if the enemy doesn't come up to you or it's not in the radius of this spell, the ball will just disappear. So I don't know. I have a slight issue with that but it works more often than not. We're also gonna have Burno Flame. This is another powerhouse incantation when you're going up against any big enemies, dragons, bosses, or even just giant packs of mobs. If you can get this off, this is gonna eradicate the screen real quick. I also always need some sort of ranged option, so for this, we're gonna be going with the Frenzied Burst. Tracking's fantastic. There's pretty much no dodgeability when it comes up to this, so it does the job very well. For the buffs, we're gonna be sitting on Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Val. Flame Grant Me strength is fantastic in this build you see how many flame abilities we are holding and our main weapon is going to gain that buff as well golden val always a wonderful buff to incorporate in any build moving on from that we got our talismans i'm going with the dragon crest great shield talismans enormously boosts physical damage negation this is always nice for me personally we have some long animations in this build like burno flame flame of the fell god and even our base weapon definitely has some wind up before it comes out fully so anytime you end up taking physical damage in case you don't get something out it's not going to be as punishing of course if you guys are better than me at not taking hits feel free to swap this out next up one that i consider a must have is going to be the claw talisman again enhancing those jump attacks and that's why i said before putting on that black feather cloak will increase your jump attacks further and get you that little extra bump of damage you're looking for i'm also going to be going with the faithful canvas talisman raising the potency of our incantations alongside radagon sword seal greatly raising attributes also increasing our damage taken you could say that's negated by the dragon crest great shield but what makes radagon sword seal very nice in this build is it's increasing health wonderful endurance is going to be increased we're definitely going to need that in this build since we're dual wielding trying to proc bleed and casting spells and also increasing our strength which our main hand weapon is fiending for really quick i just want to talk about how i allocate my potions in this build i'm putting six into mana eight into health for the most part you want to make sure you're always good on the health potions when it comes to mana we have a nice mana pool already so it's not so extreme and whatever we do cast it's usually an absolute banger so when we do cast spells we're just ripping health off the enemies anyways and we're not going to need to do too much before the stuff dies for the flask of wondrous physic we're going to have the opaline bubble tier just giving us a little extra leeway when we first start our fights and we're going to also be using the flame shrouded crack tier temporarily boosting any fire attacks that we have and you already know we got a boatload moving on let's talk about how i allocated my stats we got 70 in vigor 
30 in mind, Endurance is sitting at 25, 60 in strength, 49 in dexterity, 9 in intelligence, and 70 in faith. Vigor, pump that up to where you feel comfortable, we always need that. Mind, for this build, I feel like a safe spot is sitting around 25 to 30. This way you're able to cast at least 4 or 5 of your big abilities without having to consume a mana potion. Endurance is at 25. I would consider bumping this up, not so much to carry heavier armor, but that's great in case you're looking to do that. However, since we're dual wielding these two whips, it's great that we're just really doing jump attacks, but if you start doing the standard dual wielding attacks, it's going to eat up your endurance super quickly. I would even consider bumping this up to 27 or 30 because I feel like I've been running into issues and my character's just missing that last bit to finish the enemy off. Next up, we got strength and dexterity. I went 16 to strength because this is what the great braid is going to be scaling best with, that and faith. So this makes that specific whip do exceptional damage and I would recommend doing the same. Whereas dexterity, I left her around 49 because I'm mainly using that second hand whip to mainly focus in on any blood procs. So doing decent standard damage with that offhand weapon is nice, but the main thing we want from that is just the ability to chunk off massive amounts of health with that proc. Intelligence we don't need, and faith is at 70. I chose to be nice and strong when it comes to incantations, but feel free to drop that down a few points if you want to allocate more into the physical damage aspect of this build. But heads up, by doing so, you definitely don't want to be rocking the steel that we're doing in this build, anything below 70. Definitely start to look elsewhere other than that Erdtree seal. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by. As always, leave any questions or comments down below. I'll get back to you real quick and let me know if there's something specific you're looking for in the future. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're feeling froggy, and I will see you guys in the next video.